All right, so uh, what I did in preparation for this as I wandered around my, uh, my house and my neighborhood, and I took some reference photos. What I'm using here is a reference tool called PureRef. Uh, you can get it online for a very small amount of money. I haven't actually used it yet because typically I have two monitors and I'm lazy and I just throw up a bunch of images on Photoshop. Uh, but I think uh, this is probably a superior workflow in the long run. So um, this is how I'm going to try to work. I think what I'm going to do here is basically scoot stuff over here and then keep Painter kind of in this area. And if that's not workable, then uh, I may have to think of something else. But uh, generally speaking, I have more space available than I do for this tutorial recording. But I want you guys to be able to see what it is that I am looking at as I'm working. And I highly recommend that you find reference for whatever it is that you're doing, if possible, before you begin. So you have some ideas about how you want to go about trying to make your object look as realistic as possible. So I'm going to talk about each one of these very briefly, give you an idea of why I think they are going to be useful. So there was a tree trimming company doing some work on my street. So I wandered down and took a few photos of their chipper which is just a, a gold mine here. So we get these like really, really nice examples of what the uh, what happens as this kind of thick enamel paint chips off and what the metal looks like underneath. So we can get to understand kind of like what these edges here look like um, and, and uh, what the metal underneath is doing. So we get this like over here where there's a lot of handling, no pun intended. It's nice and smooth, but over here it looks like there's just kind of like remnants of, of uh, soot and exhaust and sap and dirt and whatever. So that's kind of cool in there. Um, over here, we've got a nice kind of uh, chromey thing happening where this is clearly just a different metal. So it's got a different reaction. We've got this really nice, also like the colors here probably thrown off just because it's my, 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 my phone and whatever, not the best camera in the world. Uh, but we can see there's this nice kind of like dust just sort of evenly softly packed around these features that are popping up here. Same thing kind of around there. Random little scratches here and there, which are which are really nice. And then over here, this is the the exhaust area. So we can see, you know, these features don't exist as a one-to-one -one on my model, obviously, but it's still kind of an interesting idea to, to understand like how, how the exhaust, you know, this oil here, like how it's sort of interacting with the paint. So we have this like flat orange and then it's kind of a little bit oil soaked and then we get start to get that grime and where does the grime break off and how is it broken off? And, you know, it's just, there's just a lot of information here that we can potentially take advantage of. Same, same kind of idea here where we get this like just sort of random blotchy scratch. And one of the things that and maybe if you're uh, familiar with Painter, you, you might have had this experience. But when I first started learning it and I started, uh, started understanding the procedural approach to creating textures that it offers, I started looking at textures in the real world and thinking like, if I saw this in a game, would I believe it or would I feel like it was fake? And if I saw this in a game, I'd be like, eh, that's kind of lazy. You probably just phoned it in when it's actually like a real thing. So clearly I need to, you know, make some adjustments to my my understanding of what makes a, a material uh, real or not. But you can see here, like we've got this really interesting kind of crackly stuff going on there. And, and I think that's really nice. And again, different materials, uh, different metals um, and you know, close to each other, which is, which is also kind of a cool thing. And we can see more of that sort of grungy stuff packed in there. And this is from my bike. And one of the things that I really like about this image is it shows some nice dust accumulation and sort of where that dust happens and, and where it doesn't happen. Like this thing's getting handled a little bit more than this area. So clearly there's like just more, more just crap in there. And the other thing that I really like about this is we can see one, two, three, four, five logos or print of some kind. And it's like, oh, there's another one right there and maybe something. Like that. Anyway, so the point is just adding these kinds of, of little details just makes a thing feel a lot more realistic and it's it's relatively easy to do uh, and then we've got a crowbar this might be a little bit more beat up than i want to go for but i thought maybe there's some interesting information about how the this paint is chipping off kind of over here and over here um, i really like the what's going on with the this metal here um, this the, the the pattern of how it's it's nice and clean on the edges and then we've got this sort of beautiful patina of the this 
corrosion and the dirt and the sap and you know who knows what else and this thing i actually sanded before i took these photos so we get this like kind of nice this stuff in there where it just looks like there's just a lot of little wear going on i think that's kind of cool and here's just like some dribbly stuff on the back of that uh, that truck again and we can see a little bit of like maybe some paint fading that's probably a reflection but uh kind of get the general idea more information about the crowbar and then I like this stuff a lot. This is actually pretty easy to do in Painter, this sort of weld mark thing. Uh, and one of the one of the, the good habits to get into with with modeling is you could have a high poly model with enough polygons to support this level of detail. But because it's so easily done procedurally, it's better to leave this stuff for after the fact. Like it doesn't really break the silhouette. This thing right here, that wouldn't really work as a thing to add on afterwards. But this this little surface level detail there is is uh, is going to be pretty useful. So I'm not um, at this point of the project committing to using all of these. I just kind of wanted to have a a library of, of things that I could go and take a look at when I'm trying to dial in uh, specifically what this uh, this object is going to end up looking like. And um, so we're going to give it a shot with PureRef and. And I will make these images available to you as well. And I, I again, I recommend if you don't have access to a, a shed full of kind of rusty tools, well, you can always just go for a walk and uh, find just a wealth of information on, you know, street signs or electrical boxes or telephone poles or, you know, whatever. Um, there's there's just a, there's a lot of the stuff out there that's pretty easy to find, and it makes a, a big difference. Hopefully, you will agree when we're done with this with the, uh, the realness of the final product. So uh, in the next video, we're going to we're going to jump into the materials process.